The following is a hoop ball presentation. Welcome to the Fantasy NBA Today podcast. Welcome to Fantasy NBA Today. My name is Adrian Benjamins, and I'm joined by Coach. And this episode is brought to you by Hawaiian Isles Kona Coffee Company. Get some delicious coffee and taste the Kona difference. Head over to HawaiianIsles.com and Amazon and get some coffee. Coach, I could use some coffee right now, man. It has been um, it's been a long week, man. The kids are driving me nuts. Um, I, it's uh, I'm 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 kind of tired, Coach. I could use a cup of coffee right now. How are you, How are you doing, sir? Yo, Adrian, my man. Do not let the kids get you down. That it is the dog days of summer. Uh, I had three of them at a young age. I remember those dog days very well. But they do grow up and fly from the coop, so that day will come, my man. But uh, I'm doing great, brother. Just uh, sort of the speaking of dog days, it is a little bit of the dog days of off season here. We're actually feeling a slight lull of uh, non NBA news or action. For the first time in forever so it's it's a little bit weird coach you're absolutely correct we are officially in the slow season and uh I'm getting kind of restless. I'm I'm getting kind of fidgety. I can't wait for the season to start. Um it's it's really slow and quiet right now, man, and I don't know what to do with myself, coach. So, I am really excited about today's show. We are going to finish off part three of the NBA Summer League standout players. Um, We've been going team team by team on the last two shows. And uh, Coach, I am most excited for this show. I've been waiting for this third part because we're going to talk about some of my favorite guys at Summer League. Um, And so I can't wait to get into it, man. Let's jump. You know, not a lot of news and notes because of how we just talked about how slow it's been in this lull. So I think we need to jump right into it. What do you think? Sounds good, man. There's been some small little signings. Like I saw Trey Burke uh, signed today with, uh, was it the the uh, Bucks? Six. I think? Or Sixers. Yeah. Sixers. And the Bucks signed um, somebody today, a uh, two-year deal with uh, Dragon Bender. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so just little news and notes like that. Did you see Balmer's uh, when they uh, <laughs> announced? He's so funny, man. Balmer is a riot. Coach, I mean, I he is unbelievable. I love his enthusiasm. I love his passion. Hey, I'm all for it coach if uh you know it's it's refreshing to see that from an nba owner in uh today so i i love it coach i think it's great i'll tell you what's amazing and this is going to be one of those things that show old coaches age again but my very first nba game i ever went to in my life i was 10 years old it was in 1974 a million years before you were born and it was the Buffalo Braves. My dad took me to the game. And the Buffalo Braves, these the, our old-time listeners will remember this, but that team had Ernie DeGregor, DeGregorio from NC State. He was a point guard. Uh, Bob McAdoo. Do you remember that name? He was a fantastic player. He played on And John Shoemate. Those are all for our old-time listeners. But anyway, the reason I mention it is the Buffalo Braves – ended up moving to L.A. and becoming the L.A. Clippers. Mm. And so that franchise, Buffalo to L.A., has never won an NBA championship. And they are now scooting into somewhat of a big favor to win it, like at 4-1, to one, uh, which is really exciting. So that's why Ballmer's excited. That's why their fans are excited. And it's hard not to root for them, that's for sure. So I thought the Clippers came from San Diego. They did. They they moved. No, you're right. They moved from Buffalo 
to San Diego ah. and became the San Diego Clippers. They changed their name Clippers because of the you know the boats in San Diego, but uh, and then they moved to L.A. from San Diego. So that's sort of the metamorphosis of the entire franchise, and that goes back again. I saw them in '74. I think they started in Buffalo in '70 or '71. So. That's a long time for those uh, that franchise to never win in win anything. Coach, I gotta tell you, I've uh, grown up in Southern California, and going to Laker games have not always been easy. It's an expensive, really popular ticket, so I always tend to go to the Clipper games. Coach, I've been going to Clipper games since uh, I don't know if you remember Danny Manning, like. Uh, um, teams that they've had in the past so this has been a really exciting time for the LA Clippers never before have I seen them get two guys like Kawhi and uh PG uh Paul George so um man what an exciting era for the Clippers I mean Bomber being there the coach, Doc Rivers, uh, the whole front office from Lawrence Frank to Jerry West. I mean, this franchise is dialed in right now. And, Coach, it is so exciting to be in L.A. right now with everything that's going down. So um, I, love I love it, man. It's going to be a fun, fun year for you, especially being right there, man, with yeah. that whole you know thing with the Lakers is going to get more and more intense. And, you know, you've got uh, – uh, Kerr spouting off a little bit about the AD thing. <laughs> that was unbelievable, man. Because what, what, what sour grapes, dude? I mean, what, what happened I mean, about Kevin Durant? Come on, dude. So he thinks Steve Kerr believes it's bad for the NBA that Anthony Davis forced to trade over the Lakers. Coach, does he not forget that he got Kevin Durant? Kevin Durant walked to the Golden State Warriors when he already had a stacked team and i mean he's saying this is bad for the nba i completely disagree coach and this is why this is the most exciting season for the nba because of instead of one team being so top heavy which was the golden state warriors coach we now have seven eight nine teams that are at the top we got now instead of super teams we got these combo pairings. We got two elite players on a team. Instead of four or five players on one team, we now have seven or eight teams that have two superstars. Coach, this is the most exciting thing for the NBA. What happened this offseason? Yes, I feel bad that, you know, that New Orleans lost their star. And yes, I feel bad that some of the smaller markets, you know, players walk from the smaller uh, markets to join the bigger markets and some of the bigger teams. But coach, what went down this offseason? I mean, how could you say that it's bad for the NBA or bad for the game? This is the most exciting time it's ever been. Coach, I cannot, I'm jumping through my skin waiting for this season to start because there are so many questions that I have on this upcoming season regarding pairings. How are players going to fit? Who's going to be left out of the playoffs? I mean, coach, I, I can go on and on about this. I just disagree with Steve Kerr 100% here. I'm 100% behind you, man. I, I'm with you totally. I'm Like I say, I, I have been following this game tooth and nail since 74, uh, and that's a long-ass time. And I'll tell you what, this I can't remember more of an anticipation for a season and parody and rivalries and, you know, with the team's change. I mean, it's, it's just perfect. Now, the only thing the NBA has to fix, and I've, I've been still on my Twitter raves again because it's been in the news again, is the whole thing with Adam Silver and the, how the NBA draft works with the trades being announced and the tampering and all of those dates, how they fall. I know that they're looking into that, you know, and he's, he's you know, making it sound more like, well, let's, Let's investigate these teams that are tampering. What they need to do very simply 
and I, I've stated this many times now, is they need to change the dates and the time frame so that when teams get traded, they can announce it at the draft, they put the hat on that they belong to, and they can greet their team the way they're supposed to. And then, you know, the, the trades, uh, everybody's going to talk. There's no way to control agents, players, teams. I understand they're trying to not let front offices get involved ahead of time, but just remove the ban on tampering, change the dates a little bit, and you got the perfect the perfect storm for for the NBA. So that that's the only thing I wanted to mention because that was the one other piece of news that that they're working on, and I really hope they get that right because everything else with the NBA, I mean, it's it's so much better than any other pro league. It's not even funny. So. So I agree with you 100%. And, you know, I really don't know how they could possibly fix, um, you know, like the issue of tampering. Um, it'll be really interesting. It's easy to fix. You just remove yeah. those rules. The rules yeah. are stupid. And, and they, they can't, can't be enforced, enforced. right? No. Yeah. There's yeah, no way. Absolutely. Coach, we could talk. We could do an entire show about all this other stuff. We got to jump into these players here or else we're going to end up making this a four-part four part. show. This is supposed so, to be one part if you remember. <laughs> Coach, I um, am really excited to talk about some of these players that we've got on our list for today. So let's jump right into it. I believe we left off on the New Orleans Pelicans. Uh, tell me about some of the guys that you highlighted here. Well, you know, as you know, I we got there for day three of the NBA Summer League, and by then Zion was already shut down, so that was a, a buzz kill. But uh, obviously Zion, you know, in the in the storm that he brings to the NBA, and, and just you know, he signed with uh, Air Jordan, uh, signed with Jordan, seventy five million. Uh, and, and he took less to go with them because that's where he, you know, he's that kind of guy. I really, really like him. He's going to be a star in the league, um, you know, and I, I'm so excited for the Pelicans. You know, we, you briefly mentioned, you know, they were sort of like looking like they were going to end up just complete Im- imploding and forced to trade Davis and have nothing there. But, you know, I've been singing the praises of, of, of Griffin, David Griffin coming in and, and you know, he's got all these picks He's got all this young talent. I mean, it's just amazing. And then it t- the, what I saw in summer league, you know, as I mentioned last week, my all tournament teams, two of my top 15 players came from this team and were the first two picks uh, by the Pelicans, which was beyond Zion. Zion is just, that's a given. But Nik- Nikhil Alexander Walker, who is uh, the the cousin of, of Shea Gilgis Alexander, and Jackson Hayes, you saw me sending that uh, posterized dunk all over going crazy. Those two guys were fantastic, man. So that nucleus, uh, you know, Kenrich, Willi- Kenrich Williams played well. He's sort of a glue guy, a leader. He was good in the summer league. But Nikhil Alexander-Walker and, uh, and Jackson Hayes, I mean, I think they're going to step right in absolutely in the rotation and and then with all the picks that they have coming, you know, Pelicans are are sitting really pretty. I agree with you, man. I am super impressed with Nikhil Alexander Walker. Um, this guy looks amazing, Coach. And I can't believe that he went seventeen in the real draft. I think if we redrafted that today, I think he might go much higher than that. Maybe even jump into like the 10 range or jump into that top like 10 spot. Seven. <laughs> but yeah, but coach, I do have some bad news for Nikhil Alexander Walker. From what I'm hearing, everything points in the direction that the Pelicans are going for. Um, they're not planning on tanking or they're not really planning on taking it slow. Um, You know, they added Derek Favors. They still got Drew Holiday there. Um, As long as Brandon Ingram is healthy, I think he can contribute right away. Lonzo Ball as well. Uh, We've already talked about Zion. So I'm not sure how much run Nikhil Alexander-Walker is going to get right off the bat. Coach, this team is also 
loaded in the guard spot. And I'm talking about um, the, at the two spot, you got J.J. Redick, you got Josh Hart, um, Holiday, Ball, they have Frank Jackson. So I do agree with you that he'll be a part of the rotation, but I mean, he's going to be coming off the bench, likely just playing limited minutes. So for your standard league guys, I don't think we're really going to roster Nikhil Alexander Walker this season, but coach, I love him in dynasty leagues. I mean, coach, I would take him as high as, um, you know, I was thinking of trading my number four pick in that hoop ball dynasty league for eight or nine. I wanted to take him somewhere right there, eight or nine. That's how much I love this kid looks outstanding. And, um, real quick, I want to mention, uh, Jackson Hayes, this kid looks great too, coach. I saw that dunk, uh, dunk of summer league. Some people say maybe the greatest dunk of all time in, at a uh, summer league. It was that spectacular. And you know, coach, when, uh, Jackson Hayes was coming in the draft, to me, he looked a lot like a Tyson Chandler type, like maybe just a defensive specialist, a rebounder, um, a score near the hoop, but that's it. Coach, he looks like he could be much more than that. I think he could be, Tyson Chandler with a more um, an expanded offensive game. You know, Tyson Chandler really only had a game next to the hoop. I think Jackson Hayes can have more than that. So I love this kid. You know, I saw a quote from David Griffin that said they thought this was going to be like a red shirt year for Jackson Hayes. They thought he was literally just going to sit on the bench, learn, spend the year learning and they said, nope, this kid might have a role right off the bat. He's way more ready than they thought he was. So I love Jackson Hayes too, Coach. Any uh, closing thoughts on the uh, Pelicans? No, I'm with you, man. I, I'm shocked by him as well. I figured it would take some time. But from what I saw in summer, his motor is just off the charts. And really, they're right now, I believe they're starting centers Okafor. So you know, he's just got so much more athleticism and shot blocking. And I think he'll play spurts of minutes. I mean, he's going to get in foul trouble because he tries to block every shot. But, you know, he's – I'm with you, man. I think he's going to be a good one. Mm, let's let's think- rock and roll right on to the next one so we don't start getting ourselves <laughs> into a four-part. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do All right, it. the New York Knickerbockers and my favorite player of the summer league, R.J. Barrett. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, now let me let me touch on R.J. Barrett to start off here because I know you you are uh, a card carrying R.J. Barrett fan club member. Um, you know I, I watched him the first couple of games of summer league and he looked like a dog, as in dog. I was thinking bust. He was scared. He couldn't make a foul shot. He couldn't do anything. But as the summer league went on, a couple the final uh, we got to see the Knicks. I think more than anybody. Uh, they, uh, he started bringing it together. I mean, I think he was just a nervous wreck, but I don't think, I just still don't believe he's going to be a superstar. I I think he's going to be a good NBA player, but I just see some, some cracks in the armor there. I'm not a hundred percent sold, but he was fun to watch. I'm, you know, I, I would say the jury's out as far as draft him in leagues. I know he's going like third in every rookie draft, but you know, I would think two or three times about that. The other Knicks I'll mention real quickly here. Um, you know, Mitchell Robinson played a ton, which was shocking. I thought he'd play just a little bit. And, again, premier shot blocker, um, you know, seems to be getting a little bit more control of his game a little bit. Still monster foul trouble that he's got to work through, but he'll get there. Um, Kevin Knox and Spurts did well. Sometimes he was disappeared out there. Other times he looked like he was going to be a player, which seems to be sort of the up and down, you know, initial look at him. So we'll see. He certainly has some physical ability. Uh, Trier played well. And uh, a rookie on the team that, that stood out, he had 30 points in the first game that we saw them play. And just was really uh, solid. They signed him to a two-year contract the next night. Ignis Brazadescus, Brazadescus, and he, he goes by Iggy. He's a power forward. You know, he averaged 28 uh, minutes in summer league, scored 16 points, six rebounds, and they were running isos for him 
to run the pick and roll with Mitchell Robinson uh, down the stretch of, of games. So uh, I think that he's going to make the roster. I think that he's a, a guy to take with your last pick in your drafts. Uh, just look for Iggy for the Knicks and uh, maybe a surprise story that, that sneaks in there. But the Knicks, you know, they definitely have some potential, but uh, they definitely have a little ways to go. So, Coach, you are going to be surprised by my answer on R.J. Barrett here because I'm actually not 100% convinced that he is going to be a bona fide superstar. I think he does still have a ways to go before he reaches that level. But I do think the potential is there. I mean, this is the guy who at the start of the college season last year was actually ranked ahead of Zion Williamson as the number one prospect in this draft. And now, Coach, I know he did not impress you, especially when you first got to Summer League. But my whole thing that I wanted to use as debate it was that – you know, we've seen summer league is so difficult to use as a judge of, of careers because we've seen guys like Trey Young and Lori Markinen have bad games at summer league and look outstanding and vice versa. We've seen guys ball out at summer league, guys like Stanley Johnson and who haven't panned out in in um, the NBA. So um, I didn't want my whole kind of debate that I was going to do with you is I didn't want his his early um what he did early on in summer league to reflect what kind of pro he was going to be and I love that he did show improvement each and every game at summer league um coach you are gonna be surprised when I tell you RJ Baird is actually the first player in summer league history to average more than 15 points and eight boards with four assists. First player ever in summer league history to do that. And as you said, didn't even really have that impressive of a summer league. Did end it, you know, did get better as it went on. And he did end it on high notes. Now, coach, two things that really worry me about him is that um, the shot is definitely not 100% there yet. His, his, uh, his outside shot, his three-pointer very inconsistent so that's a little concerning definitely needs to get the dialed in there turnovers is also an issue seem to kind of force the ball a little bit trying to go one-on-one when maybe he shouldn't so these two things for me kind of scare him off for fantasy for me coach because i don't want to field goal and free throw yes you're talking four cats right so there. i'm not gonna go near rj barrett and in standard leagues coach um now for dynasty leagues i do still believe that he could be an elite player one day not gonna happen this season and not even guaranteed to happen at all but the potential is there so um i still love him for dynasty leagues coach and uh but for redraft standard leagues i'm staying away from him one last thought on the knicks here coach they're scaring me Man, they are scaring me for fantasy. Let me tell you why. Um, I do love their youngsters. I do love Mitchell Robinson. Oh, my gosh. He looks spectacular. Kevin Knox scares me. He was very inefficient last year. Actually, when you take into, into account his efficiency, had one of the worst rookie seasons in history because of how inefficient he was. Coach, the other thing that scares me, they signed a lot of guys on short contracts. I'm talking about... Bobby Portis, Marcus, uh, Marcus Morris, um, uh, who, who else? Reggie Bullock. Uh, coach, these guys are all want to have spectacular seasons so that they can get their next contract. Meaning, I'm not sure how much these guys they signed are going to let the youngsters develop. I don't think they care about that. I don't think they care about winning. So, Coach, I'm really scared that guys like Julius Randle, Morris, Portis, we're going to see some selfishness from them. I'm worried it's going to take away from the maturity and the growth of the youngsters. What do you think about that? Well, I, you know, I agree with you. However, I do really admire their coach. I think Coach Fisdale is one of the better coaches out there. I think if anybody can handle it, he can. However, the, the cast of characters they put together, you've got exactly what you said. You've got that young wave of guys now with 
even with Iggy joining Barrett and Robinson and Trier, and you know, you you just got a lot of guys, uh, Damian Dots, and they're all good young players. However, you've got the other like six guys now with Randall and Port and, and Randall and Portis and some of these guys. They're not exactly what you picture as okay. These guys are going to help these young guys come along. It sounds like they're going to try to get their own, just like you said. So mm-hmm. I don't know how Fizz is going to work that great divide there and mesh all the people they signed to those one- and two-year deals with all the rookies. I have no clue. Uh, you know, they're still just you know, shell-shocked over the, the Nets getting, you know, the two big guys. So who knows, man? It's going to be a, a tough thing to watch, but I, I'm, you know, I find myself – steering away from Knicks and all drafts just because I just don't know what the hell's going to happen. I agree 100%. I, I likely will not own a single Nick. There's just question marks in every position at point guard. Is Dennis Smith Jr. starting? Is Alfred Payton, is Alfred Payton starting? You know, Coach, I understand that they needed to spend money and fill the roster, but, you know, it's pretty evident that they're going to be bad. I would rather them be bad and develop this young, wonderful core. Mitchell Robinson, Kevin Knox, R.J. Barrett, Dennis Smith Jr. I like Alonzo Trier. I I would rather them just let these kids learn, make mistakes, let them grow. And I'm really worried that their growth is going to be stunted. And for fantasy folks, I don't even want any part of it, man. I don't want any part. The only guy that tempts me, and it's for the 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 blocks, is Mitchell Robinson. He's the only one guy where I could be tempted to draft, Coach. I'm with you, man. All, All right, right, where should we go next? Market. Oklahoma City Thunder this should be a very easy one. Um, you know, the only guy that stood out for me on their entire summer league team was Kevin Hervey. He had a really strong, consistent, solid uh, summer league. But, you know, obviously the Thunder in are in monster rebuild mo- mode. Um, you know, I think, uh, you know, it's they're a wait and see for sure. I mean, they're, they're – Definitely going to turn the reins over to Shake uh, Gilgis Alexander as their new point, and you know, and then they'll build everything around those guys. You know, I doubt Gallinari will finish the season with them. They'll probably package him along the way, but they have 15 picks over the next four seasons. I don't know how. You, I mean, that's a lot of picks, man. So, uh, you know, we'll see. But anyway, as far as the summer league. Standouts, I'd say Hervey will probably make the team, uh, you know, just based on that they've gutted their roster. But, uh, you know, they've got to just sort of start from square one. You know, I was really disappointed. There are two guys that pique my interest, and I don't think we saw them at Summer League. And the two guys are uh, Darius Baisley, um, a guy that they picked with the number uh, 23 pick in the draft. And the second guy, Coach, that I'm enamored with is Hamadou Diallo, a guy who was drafted last season, super athletic, very raw guy, a guy that I think has a ton of potential on my deep sleeper list for fantasy this year. But I do believe he's dealing with an injury and uh, is not 100% yet, which is why we didn't see him at Summer League. But as you said, Coach, nobody really stood out for me as far as Summer League goes. Um, You know, I am salivating over Shea Gills Alexander on this team um, as their point guard of the future. I'm not worried about Chris Paul being there. I think that um, it's a green light and full speed ahead for Shea Gillis Alexander. I love this kid coach. So, um, you know, he, we didn't see him at summer league, but as just as far as a youngster with a ton of potential and their point guard of the future, I love this kid coach. I'm with you 100% on that one, dude, 100%. Where should we go next? Orlando Magic. And uh, one of the guys I really, really enjoyed watching, got to see a guy play uh, a couple of games, Emil Jefferson. Uh, he played all the, the summer league games there. He averaged 24 minutes and, and made the most of it. He had 17 points and 10 rebounds. Averaged a double-double, great motor, uh, you know, somebody that I didn't know a whole lot about prior to the summer league that I think will be 
uh, a terrific addition uh, to that roster. Now, you know, they have Vuk and they have uh, your favorite center from, from <laughs> Texas, Mo Bamba. So, you know, they've still got to figure out exactly uh, what they're doing. But I'll tell you what, as far as the summer league, he was definitely the standout from their team that that looked really good. You know, I'm I'm really disappointed. We only saw a little bit of Mo Bamba, and the small bit that we saw looked pretty good. And um, you know, he suffered a stress fracture last season, so uh, I was watching him intently. Coach, I got this guy on my 24 team hoop ball dynasty league two roster. I'm talking about Mo Bamba, and you know. I'm building that team for the future, so I don't mind waiting for him. But it looks like I'm going to have to wait longer with them re-upping on Nikola Vucevic. So, um, you know, I I really wanted to see Mo Bamba just completely dominate and go nuts here. So I was a little disappointed there. And then, uh, you know, I'm going to have to uh, see a little bit more of these uh, of, of this other guy that you uh m- mentioned here and because uh you know i didn't really get a chance to see them that much at summer league but you know coach a very interesting team the orlando magic because they're also got markel fultz um i like you know so they got some youngsters here and uh a real interesting team they had a lot of success this past season with aaron gordon jonathan isaac who i love um so really curious to see how they look this year I'm with you, and, and I wouldn't give up on Bamba. I, I really think he's a talent, and I, he's a kind of guy that could, when he gets, you know, a little bit more mature, a little stronger, he, he's a kind of guy that could lead the league in blocks at when he gets the opportunity to really play. So, you know, I'd hang on to him for, for uh, even leagues this year. I think at, at some point they'll have to make some kind of decision there, but uh, – but, yeah, if, if you have a chance, look up uh, a little bit of info on Emil Jefferson. I think you'll be impressed. I think he's a kid that flies under the radar. Again, you know, one of those last pick kind of guys that, that you never know could uh, strike gold. Yeah. And, you know, Mo Bamba still very young, only 21 years old and in going into his second year. So, um, you know, definitely, uh, especially in a deep deep league like a 24 teamer he's stuck on my roster coach i am not going to give up on this guy i love his upside um for a guy with his wingspan i believe he's got like seven foot wingspan showed a lot of skill uh going into last year as a prospect so i was salivating you know he gets compared a lot to like a clint capella with a jump shot so if that's at all uh if that at all becomes truth in any way Way, I will be very happy with him. Uh, all right, he'll, coach. He'll pay off. He'll he will. Where should we go next? Philadelphia 76ers, who uh I, I may pick again to win the championship. I love their team. <laughs> um they yeah, they were terrific. They were a fun team to watch in summer league as well. I, the, the the guys I wrote down, obviously we've we've spoken of Zaire Smith before. He's just such a, a good, smooth, sharp shooter. I think he'll, uh, you know, be a, a, a good sub, sort of take the T.J. McConnell role in Philly. Uh, you may be a, the guard that doesn't get a ton of minutes, but will get in there and uh, be able to knock down some shots. He's a, a good young talent. Uh, the other two guys that, that I've made note of that I thought, uh, you know, really showed some, some promise were uh, – Matisse Thibuli, I believe his name is pronounced. He uh, he was real consistent, uh, you know, potential, I think, without question. And then Shayok, Marielle Shayok was the other one, the all tough pronouncing group. But uh, he was also solid. He, you know, he can score, hits the glass, uh, steals. So, you know, they have a couple of good young players that they they drafted and picked up as uh, free agent unsigned rookies that uh, I think will be good developmental guys to keep an eye on in their G League that, uh, you know, may, may get through the system. 
Zaire Smith was the guy that I really wanted to see, Coach. I loved this guy uh, going into last year. Suffered a Jones fracture in his foot, and we didn't get to see him uh, play last season. So, you know, now that he's healthy, I really wanted to see him shine. And he did exactly that in Summer League. And uh, I think he's got a lot of talent. Uh, Love the comp that you gave. I think he's a great all-around player two-way player kind of like a three and d guy so i really like him now coach we know the sixers are going for it right now they are in win now mode in fact they are my pick to come out of the eastern conference uh to get to the finals i think they're absolutely stacked and loaded i love the fit with adding josh smith and al horford i think they're actually stronger this year after losing jimmy butler uh which is crazy so you know zaire smith is what's he gonna you know or any of their youngsters you know coach in uh hoop ball dynasty league two a lot of the guys there love shake milton and they 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 got some great youngsters but they're just it's just not going to happen for these young guys with them being so top heavy in every single position. So um, this team's locked and loaded in win now mode. So the youngsters are going to take a back seat. Dude, we're doing so many podcasts together. We're morphing <laughs> into the same brain. You know, Coach, we like, you know, we're talking each other into the same teams and players. We're going to be we're like one. You know, there's two sides. There's there's two ways. Uh, to look at this i know there's a lot of shows out there that are really popular like first take and stuff where they want two people who argue and who have completely opposite sides and you know i understand why that's very entertaining but i gotta say coach from the get-go you and i have pretty much been on the same page and we think very much alike coach sometimes you'll say something and i swear you're reading my mind like you'll say something about a team being log jammed or something like that and i like literally i was thinking the thought as it's coming out of your mouth there we go i mean that's what i taught that's you you know we're, we're on the same wavelength what can i say Good, good, good minds think alike. How's that? Yes, sir. Who's up next? The Phoenix Suns. And next, <laughs> <laughs> they, oh, they uh, you know, they had really disappointing squad. I mean, I was expecting a little bit out of a Kobo because he was their starting point guard for you know, maybe 10, 15 games last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was very underwhelming. He was just okay. I don't see him uh, getting any minutes this year. I mean, there was really no one that uh, that really stood out. Uh, you know, when they announced their first starting lineup, uh, the first guy they announced was Jack Salt, S-A-L-T. And my, my son uh, looked over to me and he said, I don't think the Suns team's very good. <laughs> uh, and, they had, and the other guy's name, his last name was Rice. So it was rice and salt coming out there. Like, what the? yeah, that, that reminds me when uh, for the Hornets, when it was uh, bacon and lamb. That kind of <laughs> reminds me of that. But there you go. I agree with you. The only guy that piques my, my interest was Eli Okobo. This is a guy I was high on. I took in my deep dynasty leagues last year. I still got him. I knew it was going to take two or three years for this guy to uh, – make it or become a starter so i'm still hanging in there with him but um you know the other guy that i really wanted to see and he actually ended up getting traded was de'anthony melton i'm a big fan of de'anthony melton really disappointed that they moved him over to memphis where you got john morant and tyus jones which means de'anthony melton's not going to get any tick over there and so um phoenix you know they do have some nice youngsters with DeAndre Ayton, um, Mikel Bridges, who I like a lot. So they do have some really talented youngsters. Devin Booker is still a youngster, and Kelly Oubre is actually still a youngster as well. So a young team, um, not expecting too much of them, right, Coach, for as far as reality goes. You know, we're, we're not expecting this team to make the playoffs or anything. We still think they're going to be pretty bad, right? 
You know, I, I think it's going to take them years to rebound. If you look at their their draft disasters over the last, like, six years, five mm-hmm. years, I mean, you know, from Drug and Bender to Chris. Josh, to Chris, Josh Jackson. Terrible. Yes. I mean, these are guys that aren't on the team and they got nothing for. And these guys were all lottery, high lottery picks. So, yeah, they're, you know, I love the Rubio. I think that's a fantastic Signing Booker is one of my favorite players in the league. Aiden, I think, has the potential to be terrific. So they've got a nucleus there, but I, I see them being, you know, a couple of years away from from even a, a playoff spot. You cannot blow that many drafts up and and rebound very quickly. So it's going to take them some time. And from what we saw from Rice and Salt in the <laughs> In the summer league, there's not a whole lot of guys coming out. I will say, I hate to be negative about it, but I I would not count on a Kobo. He just didn't show me jacked. And he, I think he'll be a G League or European player dude. I just don't think he's got it. Ah, oh, that makes me Sorry. so sad, Coach. I had such high hopes for him. You know, um, when he played, I think he played over in France – um, had a, a 40 point game over there, just looked really spectacular. And coach, you know, still a young kid. Um, uh, you know, I want to see, I don't know how old he is, but I know he came in his rookie year last year really young. Like I think he was 19 last year. Um, so, you know, still, oh yeah, he's 21 right now. So still a young kid. Point the point guard position. I say this all the time. It, it, it really, I really don't expect guys to come into the league and set the league on fire point guards their rookie year. I mean, I've only seen it done a few times. Um, Damian Lillard, Kyrie Irving, those are the last couple of guys I've seen do it. So coach, even with John Morant, like I, I, lo- I love John, John Morant. I think he's going to be spectacular, but rookie year, I just don't see, I don't think he's going to light the league on fire his rookie year. And one last example I want to give of that. Look at the improvement we saw from De'Aaron Fox from his rookie to sophomore year. I mean, it was – he really made a jump. It's just the hardest position to play in the NBA. It takes the longest to learn. So I'm going to stick with Eli Okobo because this league is so deep. Of course, you're not going to touch him in redraft leagues. Coach, I understand kind of why you think it might not happen for him, but I'm still holding out hope there, Coach. Uh, I'm going to be rooting for you, but <laughs> I have to say, a Kobo, a no no. <laughs> <laughs> Who's up um, next? All right, man. We go to the Portland Trailblazers, and they have two guys I'm excited to talk about because they were terrific and they were a blast to watch as well. Um, and it was Anthony Sim- Simons and uh, Gary Trent Jr. And Simons, you know, we know they picked him first last year and he looked young and thin and looked like it was going to be a long-term project. Then he got to play in some games towards the end of the year, threw some big numbers up on the board when he did get in there. And then I'll tell you what, man, he was fantastic in summer league. He he looked like a, a cut above a lot of the guys that he was playing with. He was one of the biggest surprises for me to see in person I did not expect expect him to be that good. I think he will be a rotation player for them. Uh, not big minutes, but I think he'll get minutes this year. He's just too smooth and explosive, and I think a, a good future young guy for them. And Gary Trent Jr., he's a guy that, again, one of those fly-under-the-radar guys from Duke that was there last year or you know two years ago that – you know, everybody thought would be a decent ball player. He it took him a while to find his, but man, did he look explosive and in control and could score the ball. Another guy that you know I think will make the the Trailblazers roster and somebody that you know, you, you may want to take a flyer on late in a draft that that could pan out down the road because he, you know, his dad was a great player. It took him a little while to get it. He's still super duper young i think he's 20 or 21 as well uh so those are the two guys i'd put a circle around and and i think simons could be eventually a starter in this league coach i uh i sound like a broken record i agree with you 
again, I love Anthony Simons. I love this guy, man. And, you know, when they drafted him, they knew he was going to be a project. Really, um, he was super skinny, young. We Like, I, Coach, I thought it would take three or four years for this kid to become, like, ready to really – um, be in a rotation. But, f- Coach, from what I'm hearing, the Blazers believe he could be ready to contribute right now. And we saw it at Summer League. You see exactly why he looked polished. He looked ready to go. Coach, uh, David Aldridge of The Athletic reported that part of the reason why Portland was comfortable dealing away Evan Turner was because they feel like uh, Simons can back up Damian Lillard this season so that is a bold statement that they think that highly of him they think he's ready to go i agree with you coach and you know damian lillard i believe he's 29 years old i think eventually when he's ready to hang it up i'm talking this is like four or five years from now right i think he is their point guard of the future i think he is a starting caliber point guard in this league for sure and uh very impressive at summer league And the other thing to keep in mind is he didn't have that one year of college ball like the other guys did. He went to, is it IG Academy or whatever? Yes. And just, you know, worked on his game and developed, you know, practiced and worked. So he didn't get the game time stuff. So he was a little bit further behind than everybody else. But uh, I'm with you. I think a a great guy for for keeper leagues that people aren't going to be paying a lot of attention to. Yeah. Portland, very interesting team, man. Uh, you know, a lot of nice youngsters, as you mentioned, Gary Trent Jr. drafted Nasir Little, who, um, you know, his summer league was OK, had some spectacular highlight plays, had an amazing dunk, I remember. Yeah. Um, and also, Coach, I love some of their other youngsters to note Zach Collins. I think the future's bright for that guy. Um, they added Scal. La, La, B, La BCA uh, and uh, coach I think this is a really interesting team to see how the Blazers match up with all of the improvements we've seen in the Western Conference with the Utah Jazz the Lakers the Clippers um, you know how is this Portland team gonna match up with all of these other Western Conference teams it's gonna be a lot of fun man I think they're right in the thick of it man I really do I think they're right in the conversation especially if uh Nurkic comes back. I think they'll they're they're going to be right in the conversation. Yes, sir. Where should we go next? Sacramento Kings and uh, interesting. You know, we had the Sacramento must have had some type of team meeting or team photo or something, and they had every single person in their organization there. Uh, <laughs> I think I sent some pictures to you guys, but they were all there from Vlade to even all the new players. He was introducing them. There, I mean, it's probably the first time the new guys coming in, but the the whole squad was there. Interesting group of guys. I always really scratch my head with some of the stuff that Vlade does and, and some of the player moves he makes. Sort of bizarre, but they do, you know, with with Bagley and and uh, Fox and 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 you know some of the. I love Harry Giles. I'm a big Harry Giles guy. Uh, you know, I think. You know, they've got a decent nucleus there. The only guy, though, that really stood out in the summer league to me uh, from from watching him was Kyle Guy, the point guard from from uh, Virginia that, that led them with all those clutch shots to the NCAA championship. He was really steady. I think, you know, he's sure probably a year away, but, you know, he handled the ball and pressure. He hit big shots. He just really sees the floor well. He's better than I thought he would be. And uh, definitely a guy I think that that can eventually, uh, you know, play some backup minutes to Fox and some of those guys there. But he's got some skill. Yeah, I didn't really get to see him too much at Summer League, Coach. For some reason, um, I don't know, for some reason I didn't see too much of the Kings. But, yeah, I mean, I'd agree with you. He was the only guy that – I wanted to see from them at summer league and um, you know, in general, as far as the Kings go coach, I don't know what to think of this team, man. I don't know. Um, I don't know what to think of the rotation, you know, from hey, from a reality standpoint, I do like some of the additions they made bringing in Trevor Ariza. Um, 
bringing in Dwayne Deadman, Rashawn Holmes again. I hope this doesn't take away from the uh, um, the growing and learning from of uh, Marvin Bagley. I hope this doesn't stunt his growth, but. Um, from a reality standpoint, I do like some of the moves that they made in the offseason. But from a fantasy standpoint, I just really don't know how to judge what their rotation is going to be like. Coach, I don't even know, like, who's going to start at, you know, is is Bagley starting at the four? Are they going to start Harrison Barnes? Is Ariza going to start um, at the two? They got Buddy Heald, Bogdan Bogdanovich. I mean, um, the only guy I know for sure is uh, I'm penciling in uh, to Aaron Fox to start at point guard and probably Dwayne Dedman to start at center. But other than that, there's a lot of question marks with this team. So um, for fantasy purposes, I'm going to stay away. And for rookie uh, rookie purposes, n- of course, nobody here that I'm really excited about, Coach. No, and and uh, Vlade just is just a massive head scratcher to me. I, I never have understood – any of the moves that he makes, you know, I hopefully they let the young guys play. I mean, I'm sure they're going to play Harrison Barnes. They paid him 85 million bucks. So I don't know. <laughs> you, know, be interesting. you know what? I should also note. I do like, uh, I do like Buddy Heald had a spectacular season last year, has solidified himself as one of the elite shooters in this league. And I love three pointers coach. So, um, Goodness. Buddy Heald, Buddy Heald is probably one of the guys coach finished as a second round value in nine category leagues last year as player 23. So, you know, I don't want to scare you guys off of Sacramento Kings completely. Buddy Heald looks like a good option there. I I think that's a great call. I mean, he was penciled in as, you know, to split time with a bunch of guys and he blew away Bogdanovich. I think Bogdanovich is probably the odd man out, but uh, I think Heald will be, I mean, his, shooting percentage last year was unbelievable. I, I didn't think he he had that in him to shoot that well. I thought he was more of a volume shooter, but he was terrific. So he'll probably, you know, I think you can feel very comfortable, you know, with, with Bagley, Fox, Barnes, you know, as a late pick and, and, uh, and healed as being their main guys. And then, you know, they'll wrote, they'll, who knows though, you know, they, it'll, it'll be an interesting situation uh to see and you know you've got you know, you've got luke walton there so that put a whole new spin on everything you know he'll put his stuff in and you know again uh, not a team that i believe will have any chance at the playoffs but uh you know they'll they'll start certainly knock some teams off here and there mm-hmm. who's up next coach san antonio spurs and uh they, I have uh, three guys listed for them that, that stood out. You know, obviously we've talked uh, at nauseum about Lonnie Walker. He's one of both of our favorite guys as far as, you know, just the ability that he shows out there. But we both have such concern because of the massive depth that San Antonio has with Murray coming back from injury and white and just the whole group there Forbes. And so, you know, Walker can play. I mean, he's got the full game. He looked terrific. Uh, He shot the ball. Well, he just, you know, he had, I mean, when you average 30 a game, I mean that you you can't do much better than that. He only shot like 60% from the field. So, I mean, you know, it's just like a, a man amongst boys there for a while. So I, I, I'm hoping he can push his way into that rotation with the Spurs. I think if he's healthy, uh, I think it's going to be hard to sit him. So, uh, you know, keep a, a big eyeball on that one. Uh, a guy that, that, that stood out and played well uh, real consistently uh, for the couple of games we saw him was Quindary Weatherspoon. And, after the, the couple of games where he just played so terrific, 20 points a game, seven rebounds, uh, three assists, and two steals. I mean, that's that's some ball. That's his average for the two games, not total. And uh, they immediately signed him, uh, I believe, to a either a two-way contract or a two-year deal, one or the other. Uh, so he'll he'll be on that roster or or you know, uh, bumpering between G League and the roster. A guy to keep an eye on. He's young. And then uh, the guy 
I think I mentioned on an earlier show that I took with my last pick in my dynasty league to show you how much I think about his potential is Lucas Samancic. He just, he has the it factor of smarts that I know will play right into Pop's hands. I mean, he just sees the floor. He rebounds really well. He's a big guy. He can score. He can shoot the three. I mean, he's just, if, if you take, you know, Pop, four or five man, out of a copy machine. I mean, it's, it's this guy and he's super young, um, fits, you know, checks all the boxes for a pop success guy. And I think uh, very quickly he'll work his way into that rotation and be uh, a player for them for, for quite some time. So uh, again, you know, he's going to go undrafted in a lot of places. Most people aren't talking about him. I don't think he's going to make a monster splash, but for a very late, late pick in a standard league, as in last pick or as a dynasty uh, towards the end of the draft pick, he's he's worth a look. Luka Saman- Samanic, um, coach, destroyed the first day of the combine. Um, during the five-on-five scrimmages, he destroyed it. He was played so good. Coach, they told him not even to come back for day two. And, um, you know, this guy was not even projected, I think, to be drafted anywhere near where he ended up going. But he did so well at the combine. Um, ended up getting drafted by the Spurs. Looks like a great find, a gem, um, and no surprise that the Spurs, uh, that the Spurs are, is the team that uncovered, uh, this hidden gem, right, coach? Um, long, I, I gotta touch on Lonnie Walker real quick. Um, looked outstanding. I love this kid, coach. You know, one of the things that surprised me is they were using him like a point guard at Summer League. I did not know he was that skilled that he could handle the ball like that. And I mean, he, coach, all he around played game. The one. He played Co- the one in Summer League. Absolutely. Coach, Becky Hammond said in the offseason that she wants to turn him into a defensive specialist. And man, I think this kid is a do it all type guy. Now, as you mentioned at the beginning, this team is loaded at the guard spot with DeJounte Murray, Derek White, Patty Mills, Bryn Forbes. They can play Marco Bellinelli at the two. So unfortunately, I don't think I don't think we're going to see Lonnie Walker get a lot of run, uh, but I do think we are going to see him get bench minutes, and I really hope we continue to see him improve because, Coach, I think he's going to be an outstanding pro. I love his potential that like two or three years down the line. I think he's going to be a guy we're drafting as like a top 50 player in two or three years from now, Coach. I, I think he's going to contribute this year. I'll, I'll go out on a limb and say I think he's going to get legit minutes off the bench. I think, you know, it's it's time that they start phasing out Patty Mills. He's been there since the Reagan administration. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they've got these young guys. they got to get them in there. I mean, I think it's going to be White, Murray, and Walker. I think those are the three guards of the future. I think those are the three guards that Pop's going to play a lot. I think the guys that are going to suffer the the blow are probably going to be Forbes and Mills, but we'll see. It'll be it'll be a fun year. Three more teams, my man, and we're done. I hope I hope you're right about that. Let's go. Who's next? Toronto Raptors, the defending champions of the world, uh, which are now picked to be like second to last, I think. But uh, they had two guys that I thought you know are worth a mention uh, that played well. Um, Chris Boucher, Bouch- however it's pronounced, I believe that's how it's pronounced. Um, he, uh, you know, he's a guy that got a cup of coffee last year, uh, but was real, real solid. Played uh, four games, twenty-three points, ten rebounds, uh, two assists, two blocks. I mean, he really stood out. Uh, I'd be shocked if he didn't make their their uh, their roster and get some minutes as a big for the Raptors this season. He was definitely their best player in the summer league. Um, The other guy that that played solid uh, that was worth a mention as well as Terrence Davis. Didn't know 
a, a lot about him going in, but, you know, he won me over. He played his tail off, uh, you know, 28 minutes a game. He had 19 points, six rebounds, five assists, uh, 1.3 steals and one block per game. I mean, talk about filling up the stat sheet and he was just all over the floor. Great motor, uh, good young player that I think uh, will, will be somebody that will, will uh, crack their rotation at some point. Uh, I'm very impressed with uh, Chris uh, Boucher. I, I, I'm saying it because Bobby Boucher, you know, I, coach, I, <laughs> I didn't, believe that's how it's pronounced. I didn't really know much about this guy until summer league and blew me away. Looks like the real deal. I think he's a lock, as you said, to make the roster. Now, unfortunately, a loaded front court with Serge Ibaka, Marcus Saul, Pascal Siakam. They they added Rondé Hollis Jefferson. So not sure how much we're going to see, but I do think that that they like this guy a lot, and they consider him maybe a potential piece of the future contributor um, a few years from now. So I think he's a lock to make the roster. Just don't know how much we're going to see, and then. Um, other than that, I didn't really see too much else there. He was the main guy that just impressed me. Coach was named to the Summer League second team, so really showed out there at Summer League. I, I think he is better than RHJ right now. I think, you know, even though he's young, I think he'll, you know, they're not going to win anything this year. I think they'll let the kid get some minutes and, and develop them. I now, I also think as the year goes on, too, I think they'll start getting a new identity with some of their young players. Don't be surprised if, you know, eventually Gasol or Bach or those guys get moved and they start reformulating around uh, a, a young squad. So just something as the year goes on to watch because it could make a big shift in, in uh, you know, uh, in – play for for some of the leagues for this season all right who's up next coach utah jazz are second to last and uh they are pretty easy as well they had one guy that just blew away everybody else uh and really surprised me i you know i was looking for willie reed and some of the big guys that were on this summer league roster to to stand out and the only guy that stood out at all, and he stood out big time, was Tony Bradley. He's a legit big uh, 20 points, 12 rebounds, three assists, a steal, and a block and a half a game. And he just dominated the paint. Uh, really looked skilled. Uh, guy that I did not know much about, but uh, I would not be shocked for a half a second if he wasn't uh, second, third team center uh to go to go bear next year man he looked exceptional and uh coach I, I mean i was waiting for him to have a bad game at summer league i don't think he had a bad game he was a double double machine center from north carolina and uh you know when he got drafted i thought ah eh, he's okay you know he's gonna be a backup center i might be wrong on that coach he might end up being a starting center in this league. I think that could be in the cards for him. Now, unfortunately for this upcoming season, we know Rudy Gobert, uh, the stifled tower. He's their center uh, of now. And they also brought in Ed Davis there as well, who who we know is a solid backup, big, um, great rebounder as well. So uh, for this season, you know, maybe we see Tony Bradley get some third string minutes, but I think Utah they do like him. I think he could definitely have plans for their future there. Um, great. Gr just a great showing at Summer League, Coach. Definitely a, a, a you know, a stash guy for your Dynasty League, So, All right. Who's up last? Last team, the Washington Wizards. And my personal favorite rookie uh, for this season, uh, just as a – just because I like it, the style that he plays is – Roy Hishimura, I can't say it, Hishimura. Uh, Roy Hishimura, just, uh, you know, from Gonzaga. The, I just love the kid's presence on the floor. He, uh, he really played well. He was consistent. He can shoot the ball some. Great rebounder. Uh, 
good assist man. Just looks like a a three four year NBA veteran uh, as as a young kid coming in. I think uh, absolutely will immediately get major minutes for the Wizards. I think uh, uh, he's a guy that that you can draft as a rookie and expect uh, a lot of uh, statistics right off the bat. I think he'll he'll uh, he'll jump in there and do a great job. A um, couple other guys that played well for Washington. They they were solid. They looked good. Uh, obviously, you know Troy Brown. Uh, you know he started a lot of games for Washington uh, during the regular season, and he he may do uh, the same again this year. He you know filled up the box score, rebound, just really a cut above athlete that uh, looked very smooth. I think he'll. He'll be again another guy as Washington sort of resets with with uh, Wall being out with with some of their young guys. I think you can count also on Brown having a really good season this year and again an, a young guy for the future. Uh, a few other guys, uh, Moritz Wagner that had come over in the trade from uh, you know the Michigan kid that came over from the Lakers, definitely showed some signs. You know, I'm not sure. Uh, if he'll get backup minutes uh, or uh, behind Brian or not this year, or what what role he'll play, but you know I think he's somebody to to keep an eye on. He certainly has some ability; he can definitely knock down th- a three as a stretch five, uh, and so you know somebody else. Uh, the, the last guy is uh, Troy Coppain. I think it's pronounced Coppin Coppain. Uh, he he just again a guy that I wasn't expecting a lot out of, but you know started most of the games in summer league was very consistent. Uh, you know another young stash guy for the the Wizards in their rebuild mode uh, that that has some ability. Uh, I was very disappointed that uh, Troy Brown actually went down at Summer League. I, I believe it was just a knee contusion, or at least I hope it was just a knee contusion because uh, he was balling before he went down. Had a really, I think he played one really good game at Summer League and then was having a good game when he got hurt. Coach, he's on my sl- uh, sleeper list for this upcoming season because. Uh, um, you know, with the Wizards kind of going into rebuild mode, they got kind of a hole on the wing, um, front court wing area where Troy Brown's at. So I think it's a possibility Troy Brown starts. I think he's an interesting guy to to look at towards the end of your drafts. And one last thought here before I move on from the Wizards, Coach. They drafted a guy named Admiral Schofield, who I think has – the coolest name in the NBA, man. <laughs> he is cool, man. And he looks like a bodybuilder. He's Dude, like a he, fullback. He is ripped, man. He this is. guy is jacked. And his name is Admiral Schofield. Come on now. Come on. I'll tell you, he was he's so ripped and so intimidating. He just he did not impress me that much on the court. <laughs> And I actually leaned over to my son to tell him I thought he wasn't very – Schofield was not very good. And I was, like, afraid he would hear me. I was like, I think this guy stinks. But I did it very quietly. <laughs> yeah. Hey, second <laughs> round – pieces. Second round draft – Um, second round draft pick, late, late pick, so – we don't, uh, you know, we don't really have high high hopes or high expectations for yeah. him. I just think he's got a great name, and uh, you know, I I don't know, Coach. Is that it? Are we? Did we make it to the end of our summer league player extravaganza? Extravaganza. We did. We almost made this a five part series, <laughs> but we we were able. So I hope our listeners, you know, will be able to go back at some point. Once everything settles and the season gets started and and maybe some of these guys, they can plug in there and and uh, and they can get something out of this. But, uh, you know, I hopefully it was it was very in depth and and uh, give some people some some sleepers for their leagues coming up. Coach, we're going to get in trouble for going long as usual. Where I think we're already over the hour mark. So let's wrap a bow on this. Where can the listeners hit you up at? I'm at Joe Sarvati. That's J-O-E-S-A-R-V-A-D-I on Twitter. And please jump on the Hoopball forums. We've got a bunch of conversations 
that are actually getting uh, really a lot of leverage, even though we're in the dog days right now. This is when champions are built. So keep working on your squads, man. How about you? I'm at Adrian Benjamins. Hit me up. Well, we love hearing from you guys. Actually, Coach, I had a really great question on Twitter that I wanted to get to, but I'm going to save it for the next one because uh, it took us so long to go over all these summer league guys. I'm going to save it. But you guys, hit us up with your questions, and we will uh, talk about them on the shows. Um, Stick with us, guys. You know, we're hitting that low period, as we mentioned. So we're going to start diving deep into prep, especially now that we, you know, everything's settled, right, Coach? We know who, where all the movement happened. The draft is over. The rosters are kind of set. Let's take a look at depth charts. Let's see how this landscape's shaking out for fantasy for the upcoming season. Let's get the listeners ready for the upcoming season and get them prepped. So you guys stick with us. We got a lot of stuff coming and we will see you guys next week. Thank you guys so much for listening and supporting the show. We'll see you later. This has been a Hoop Bowl presentation.